Hello students, welcome to the answer writing program. In December month, we are covering GS1 that is History, Society and Geography and today we are discussing questions from these two topics from GS1 Geography that is distribution of key natural resources across the world and the second topic would be the factors responsible for the location of primary, secondary and tertiary sector industries in various parts of the world. Let's take an overview of all the three questions. The first question is related to the pharmaceutical industries and its regional concentration on the western coast of India. What are the factors behind that? Next is about the lithium. Why it is the most sought after mineral? Means it, why it is in most demand? And the distribution of lithium across the globe. The next question is related to seaweed and the challenges in the seaweed cultivation and the potential uses of seaweed. So let's start one by one. The first question says that the pharmaceutical industries is heavily concentrated on the western coast of India. What are the factors responsible for the regional concentration of pharmaceutical industries in India? So the question is setting the context that the Indian pharmaceutical industries are concentrated on the western coast of India. So we need to write down the factors behind that regional concentration. So this is the one and only demand of the question. So what we can do in the answer? In introduction, we can discuss about the location pattern of the industries. We can also use the context or the current affair that India and its pharmaceutical uh, leverage over the world. And with the body, with the smooth flow, we are, uh, will be telling the factors responsible for the concentration. Then Towards the end, we can also tell that yes, there are some factors that are responsible for the regional concentration of the pharmaceutical industries on the western coast. But in the recent times, it is diversifying the concentration or the uh, location patterns towards the other parts of the country as well, like in Baddi, in Himachal Pradesh, to Sikkim, to Hyderabad, etc. And also, in the conclusion, we can tell about some governmental initiative for the expansion of the manufacturing units of the pharmaceutical industries. So this way, our uh, answer flow would be there. So let's start with the introduction. In introduction, uh, or before introduction, we should know that what are the weight losing industries, what are the weight gaining industries, what are the foot loose industries. So for that, first we need to understand what is the location of the industry. So location of the industry is about the geographical spread of the economic activity within an economy. So it is about the geographical spread. It means the locational pattern of some economic activity. Where the employment will be given, where the demand supply would be taken care of within an economy. So it is the location of the industry. And the location of the industry is depend or it's uh, uh, dependent on the multiple factors like dependence on the raw material, proximity to the market, capital requirement and the labor uh, requirement. So there are the multiple factors for the location decision of any industry. The very first thing we have discussed about the raw material. So there are industries which loses weight in its manufacturing process like the jute. So towards the jute mills or in the manufacturing of the final product, this jute loses the weight like the cotton mills, like steel and the cast iron. So these are weight losing industries. So what we need to do, we need to locate our industries towards the raw material. On the other hand, there are some industries which gaze the weight like the automobile, uh, like the bread sector, bread uh, industry. So these are the weight gaining industries. So what we have to do, we have to locate these industries near the market so that the transportation cost should be minimized. And again, at the same time, there are other industries which do not uh, depend on some one or two raw material, but there are the multiple lightweight raw materials which are the input of some industries. So the influence or the attractiveness towards the separate raw material so that the decision uh, of locating that industry should be the raw material, it diminishes. 
and these refer to be as the footloose industries it means they can foothold their industrial location at anywhere they can be diversified in any part because they are not dependent on the one or the weight losing or the weight gaining product but it is depending upon the multiple wide ranges of the multiple uh, lightweight raw material so pharmaceutical industry is also the one type of the footloose industry only so what we will see that in uh, despite of its footloose uh, nature these pharmaceutical industries are heavily concentrated in the western coast so with these we will take the smooth flow towards our body that what are the different factors with respect to the regional concentration okay so this way you can introduce your answer or you can get to know about the brief uh, manufacturing or the industrial location part next is you can also use some basic concept or the context uh, that why this question is being asked because in the covid times we have witnessed that the india was the major exporter of the generic medicines towards the third world countries and also india exported the vaccination to the major part of the world so what we can write is that india is known as the pharmacy capital of the world india produces 95% of its own uh, bulk production or the uh, bulk domestic uh, drug requirements and also india is a major exporter to the third world countries and towards that uh, then start with the main demand of the question towards the body okay so let's move on to the body part we need to write down the factors for the regional concentration we have discussed that there are the factors or there are some arguments or the points that the location of the industries are dependent on the very first thing is about the raw material so for raw material the drugs or the manufacturing of the uh, pharmaceutical products uh, petrochemical products are the input to the pharmaceutical industries so the raw material is from the petrochemical plants so if we install or establishes our industry or the location of the industry is such that it is near the proximity to the petrochemical plants then it would be the good choice for the location of the industries so we are writing about the factors uh, why there are the regional concentration on the western coast because there the inputs for the pharmaceutical or the drug manufacturing is the petrochemical and gujarat especially bharuj the uh, one of the largest petrochemical plants are there in bharuj gujarat so the raw material thing is getting sufficed from this industrial location then next is the apis active pharmaceutical ingredients india is importing apis from majorly from china and other parts of the globe as well so the input is api and api india is importing so the ports requirement uh, to the proximity near the port is again a requirement for the raw material so the proximity to the port for the inputs for the uh, import of the raw material again kandla mumbai uh, bhavnagar these are the major ports so the raw material uh, extraction or the getting of the raw material from these ports will be sufficed from that then next is after raw material what we need for the establishment or for the good maintenance and the operational facilities of the pharmaceutical industries next is labor and for the pharmaceutical industry we need the skilled labor force and skilled labor force or the skilled workforce and for the skilled workforce we need good educational and the research institution where the innovation happens where the there should be the collaboration between the market what exact the industry is requiring and what the academic uh, colleges are providing so that there should not be the demand and supply mismatch of the employment or the employees so there should be the good collaboration between the industry and the academic uh, institutions and second there are the uh, institutions should be there where the pharmaceutical sciences are uh, being taught so in maharashtra in pune there are the uh, different pharmaceutical sciences institutions are there so our skilled labor workforce demand is getting sufficed from there next is about for the establishment of the pharmaceutical industry or for the sake of any other industry what we need we need capital and from where this capital will come from the good banking facilities when we have the good credit system so we have mumbai it is also known as the financial capital again this is sufficing the condition of the capital for that establishment of the industries next is about the communication or the connectivity 
connectivity in terms of road, railways, airport, airways and uh, ports. So there are special uh, specific economic zones are there on the western coast like uh, for example gift city in Gujarat. So this is again sufficing the con uh, condition for the good connectivity or the good infrastructural development in the western coast which are the requirements for the establishment of the locations or the establishment of the pharmaceutical industry. Next comes the governmental policies or the initiatives which uh, prompt the industries or which prompt the ease of doing business for the private partner as for the matter for the government partners as well so that there should be ease in the establishment of industries and there should be some incentives that why only this uh, stakeholder would select this place for the establishment of the industries. There are some incentives government provide 100% of sometimes 100% exemptions on the that uh, excise duties on the uh, final product uh, in income tax exemptions the government provides special uh, subsidies like on the insurance premium etc so if the government is providing some good ecosystem for the expansion of the manufacturing unit that would be the good condition for the location of pharmaceutical industries so mumbai is providing the tax incentive stamp duty exemptions and the state incentives for the taxes and the clearance and it is also providing ease of doing business so you can make some map also it is showing about the regional concentration on the western coast first thing and also as we have discussed before the introduction that you can also tell that towards the end that first you tell about that yes there is a regional concentration on the western coast but again due to some other facilities the uh, locations of these industries are getting diversified to the other parts as well you can also use these arrows to tell about the diversification so the first diversification is towards Baddi in district Solan Himachal Pradesh due to favorable climatic conditions and also due to the favorable governmental initiatives or the policies of the state government of Himachal Pradesh next is uh, government uh, these industries are also moving towards Hyderabad because now the pharmaceutical industries are also technologically oriented the processes in the manufacturing of the drugs these are including the artificial intelligence machine learning in the meddling uh, blending granuling of the uh, pharmaceutical drugs so due to the tech oriented processes involved in the manufacturing of the pharmaceutical products also these locations of industries of the pharmaceutical industries are also getting diversified towards Hyderabad also the third point is about the Sikkim or the Northeast due to the governmental policies of development of northeast about the industrial policy and the promotion of the northeast or uh, this policy of 2007 government is aiming to promote the industrial development in the northeastern sector as well so government is providing the tax exemptions providing subsidies insurance premium etc in these regions so that the locations of the industry should be diversified to the other uh, parts of the country as well okay so this we have already discussed towards the conclusion what we can write that government is promoting or government is aiming to expand the manufacturing unit for this government has come up with production linked incentives to expand the manufacturing units in the pharmaceutical cases and PLI for the promotion of domestic manufacturing of the critical key starting material which we say as KSMs, drug intermediaries and the APIs in the country. So towards the end you can write about the PLI scheme. So this was our first answer. Let's see the model answer about uh, in introduction about the pharmaceutical and its footloose nature and despite being footloose in nature why only there is a regional concentration in the western coast then factors. Then finally, governmental initiatives or the PLI scheme. Now let's move on to the second question. Lithium is becoming the most sought after mineral. It means which is in most demand nowadays in the world. So this is the context set in the question. In this context, describe the distribution of lithium across the globe. This would be the first demand. Then we need to write down the steps taken by the government to ensure the supply of lithium as well. So this would be the second demand. We have to write the governmental initiatives in this regard. So why lithium is the most sought after mineral these days? So what we can write in the introduction about the context 
that all the countries across the globe are transitioning towards the renewable sources of energy or towards the cleaner uh, energy sources and towards a digital economy from the fossil fuel based economy so to scale up or to fuel these energy demands lithium is the most holds the most strategic importance to scale up these processes for this transitioning towards the cleaner sources of energy so this way you can write the introduction that this is the context this is the broad view that why lithium is being uh, considered as the most sought after mineral these days also you can write about something characteristics of lithium that it is a soft silvery white alkali metal it is also known as the white gold and also it is a chief constituent of the lithium ion batteries ev electronic vehicles government what is pushing for the ev and uh, this lithium has a wide industrial applications as well also you can take some recent context that the geological survey of india has recently discovered about the 5.9 million tons of lithium reserves in the riyasi district of jammu and kashmir so anyways you can write about the introduction then move on to the body part the question is asking about the distribution of lithium across the globe so where this lithium is being found so what in this case you can draw you can draw a world map you can uh, write something about the south america about the abc triangle in the counter clockwise direction argentina bolivia and chile and in bolivia the major salt playa lake is there which holds the uh, proven to be the most uh, highest lithium reserves in the world you can also tell about something uh, related to china and also about australia these are the major lithium reserves or which produces the most of the lithium you can also tell something about the usa so this way you can draw the world map as well to show about the world's global distribution so we have to write as well that the first is about the lithium triangle about this abc uh, triangle in southern america it holds 55 to 60% of the global lithium reserves and bolivia uh, uyuni salt flat which is also the playa lake this holds or this proved to be the world's largest lithium reserves then next comes australia it is also holding the significant amount of the lithium reserves and currently australia is the largest global lithium producer next is about china china it holds only 7.3% of the world's reserved but it processes 60% of the global lithium and 70% of the cell manufacturing for the electric car industry china is doing next you can also tell any of the question with respect to the world take it towards india that finally that india if it has the lithium reserves or not so you can write something about the recently discovered that jnk in the riyasi district gsi has discovered 5.9 million tons of the lithium reserves so this way you can tell about the global distribution of lithium then we need to write down about the governmental steps in this direction so again we have to write in the different dimensions that what government is doing for this so first to uh, first discover that if there are the lithium reserves we have to be domestically sufficient because india is totally import dependent on the lithium and because india is pushing for the ev penetration in uh, india and for the sustainable development uh, goals and for the renewable sources of, uh, of energy or for the cleaner sources of energy we need domestic sufficiency of lithium but we do not have lithium so what we can do we can give a thrust to the exploration of the lithium reserves if there are any lithium reserves in india we should obviously extract them we should obviously see that where are these reserves we have to mine that instead of import dependent we should be self sufficient so for that there in uh, indian government is uh, giving a push for the exploration of the lithium reserves so for this again gsi has discovered recently about the 5.9 million tons in the riyasi district next is about as we are import dependent so there are some international collaboration with the countries like uh, china australia and abc triangle so india is extracting or india is uh, importing from these countries as well so what we can do we can also take stance in the acquisition of the mines over there for that india has formed the kabil khanij bidesh india limited for identification uh exploration acquisition development mining and processes of the strategic minerals overseas for the commercial use in india 
so that we'll not only be just uh, importing but also we are mining over there for the development of the mines in the other countries as well there this is international collaboration in this regard next is about the uh, stakeholder approach that only till now it uh, uh, this lithium is in the reserved list so only the governmental partners can extract those or mine those so what we can do this to increase the or to scale up the operations of mining of the lithium reserves what we can do is we can take from the private sector participation for this india is considering the reforms to boost the private sector participation next is whatever lithium we have either we are mining for the new or we are importing but what about already what we are using we are just throwing it out when it's not in use so for the recycling process for the reusage of the lithium uh, products or the lithium uh, mineral from the recyclable or from the used product india is also pushing for the new battery waste management rules in this government is pushing the responsibility for the producers consumers and the dealers regarding the safe disposal of batteries lithium ion batteries and boost the nascent stage lithium battery recycling industries so whatever we have lithium in our country we are reusing also so these are some governmental initiative in this regard next comes the conclusion so we have discussed that what the indian government is doing and why lithium is required so we can write about some future outlook that yes it is a new age a mineral uh, it is a now the economies are material intensive uh, instead of the fuel intensive or fuel dependent so it plays a very crucial role in the new age energy so india should take the proactive measures it should uh, involve in the international participation or the partnership to secure the stable supply of lithium so as not to hinder the supply chain in the lithium next is also it can emphasize the long term contract for the unhindered lithium supply so this was our second answer let's see the model answer first something about the lithium or the context then you can also make a hubspoc model related to the uses of lithium then distribution you can also make the south american map or uh, for that matter the world map and tell some reason uh, regions about abc triangle australia and china and also you can tell about something jnk riyasi district uh, recently discovered a uh, lithium reserves then uh, some measures finally uh up in, about its importance new age energy system and uh, why this is important and what should be the uh, new approach for the unhindered lithium supply okay now next move on to the third question seaweed is nothing but the wealth of the ocean mention the potential uses of the seaweed also describe the challenges in the seaweed cultivation so there are three parts of the question one is nothing but the context set so if you want to write in the introduction or as a separate body part it's up to you you can tell about some significance or how sea uh, sea weeds act as a wealth of the ocean so this could be the first demand and then we have to tell about the potential uses of sea weeds and then there are some challenges in the sea weed cultivation this would be the third demand of the question so in introduction you can either write about something def definition of the sea weed that sea weeds are the macroscopic algae grown in the marine or the coastal waters or you can also tell about that there are the new renewable sources for the food uh, energy chemicals and medicines also i want to uh, put a light on the like recently there is uh, one nature based documentary on netflix about the my octopus teacher uh, it is a nature based and the one man uh, goes in the search of octopus and about its characteristics how uh, she lives in the water so uh it is about the uh, south african coast so all in the whole netflix this series whatever the underwater these things are being shown these are the sea weeds or the kelp forest kelp forest is also the one type of the sea weed only so this is the sea weed or the kelp forest uh, visualization in this netflix series so whenever you see anything uh, in your nature or in any of the movies you can put a context over here and this is the very good practice also if you write anything with respect to the uh, nature or with respect to in any reality whatever you are visualizing so you can write it in your answers as well 
and this also gives you the clarity that exactly what are the kelp forests, what are the seaweeds and how these algae act as a habitation for the multiple species over there. Okay, so in introduction, uh, this is good. Then body, we need to write about the significance of the seaweeds or the how it is uh, the wealth of the ocean. How it is a wealth of ocean because it provides some uh, utilities or the applications that is very uh, important or the fundamental for the ocean health. So the first one is about the bio indicator. Seaweed act as a bio indicator. How? Uh, if there is any agricultural residues or the waste or any pollution with respect to industries, aquaculture, households, it ends up into the seas or the oceans and there are some nutrient imbalance in the oceans or the seas or the water bodies, then there are some algal blooms and this shows that there is some marine uh, chemical damage in that and seaweeds, uh, okay, if there is some algal bloom, Algal bloom means it means the uh, eutrophication is there or there is some imbalances in the nutritional properties over there. So this give rise to the seaweeds. So if there are so much eutrophication, so much algal bloom and so much seaweeds, it shows that there are some marine chemical damage. So it acts as a bio indicator of the ocean or the water body. Next is about the carbon sequestration water body or the like oceans or the seas these are the natural sequester of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and if there are some algal bloom or algae or micro algae or macro algae are there in the water bodies these sequester carbon dioxide in more uh, quantity then this absorbs carbon dioxide more effectively than trees also it has a potential to sequester 53 billion tons of the co2 annually if we uh, grow 9% of the oceans with the seaweeds. So this has this much potential to sequester carbon dioxide from atmosphere. Next is it sequesters iron and heavy metal also from the oceans. Like it traps excessive iron and the heavy metals. So it pre helps in preventing the damage of the water body. Next is about it is also adapt according to the climate change and it also helps in mitigation of the climate change. How? The first thing due to climate change there is a sea uh, surface temperatures are rising and also due to this uh, precipitation patterns are getting increased, uh, huge droughts, huge cyclones are there. So it dampens the wave energy and uh, protects the shorelines from this cyclonic activity or from the huge uh, coastal erosion. It helps in preventing that. So next is about the potential uses of seaweeds. What we can write in the potential uses? What are the various dimensions where these seaweeds can be used? Like as a food uh, resource, as an energy resource, how it helps in conservation of environment, what are the various industrial purposes for that and how it helps in mitigating the climate change. So these would be the multiple dimensions in which you can write about the potential uses of seaweeds. So the very first thing is about the sustainable food source. So it provides the nutrition. These are the rich source of the vitamins, minerals, multiple micronutrient. It do not require uh, fresh water, any fertilizers or any arable land. So it grows in the water and it is the sustainable food sources. Next is about the renewable energy source. It provides a rich source of the biomass which can act as an input for the biogas. So the energy demands can be fulfilled from here. Next is about how these act as the uh, potential uh, means utility of the seaweeds in the environmental conservation. So it helps in the seaweed treatment because it traps excessive iron or the heavy metal from the water body. First thing and second is about also there are the rich organic material uh, suitable for the use as a manure. These algals or the micro algae or the macro algae, these can be used as a manure or the bio fertilizers in the farms. So helps in organic farming as well. Next is there are the multiple utilities in the pharmaceutical and the biomedical industries like because these have the anti-cancer, anti-diabetic and anti-inflammatory properties in these algal or the uh, algae or this marine algae system. Then again it has a potential uh, industrial usage as well. Next is about there are some challenges in the seaweed cultivation. It means the cultivating and harvesting of seaweeds in the water body for the commercial purpose maybe or for the individual purpose. 
first again we need to divide it into the multiple dimensions that what are the different environmental issues what are the climatic uh, limitations in the commercial cultivation of the seaweed and what are the supply side limitations so we'll see one by one first thing is uh, eutrophication due to human seaweed it negatively impacts seaweed growth because seaweed they grow in the proper uh, water characteristics like there should be the proper sunlight there should be not so much the sedimentation load and also there should be the optimal temperature range in that so if there is any eutrophication this negatively impacts the seaweed growth again the commercial cultivation these are there are some challenges like the runoff from the land based agriculture there are again pollutants from the thermal power plant and the chemical factories because the seaweeds are highly sensitive to the water pollution so if there is any change in the uh, characteristics of the water body we uh, this hampers the commercial cultivation or the cultivation of the seaweed in the water bodies next is about the climatic limitation due to climate change there is sea surface temperature is rising and this inhibits the growth of uh, seaweed species again because these require some optimal temperature to grow and due to climate change temperature is increasing so this hampers the growth of seaweed next is about again due to climate change cyclones are getting impacted and cyclones and high sea fluctuation level this uh, physically destroy the seaweeds next is supply side limitations to commercially cultivate this seaweed we need proper good uh, labor force skilled labor force also and also uh, if normal labor uh, is required some technology is also required and also there are the labor shortages during the paddy harvesting uh, period because the major labor is involved over there and transplanting season so there are the diversification or the uh, divergence of the labor towards these parts then there is a lack of technology to improve the processed products from the seaweeds next is towards the conclusion what we can write is we can do that due to the increasing importance of the seaweed and uh, the direct and the indirect dependence of some final products on the seaweed these has a immense potential which has estimated to be total of us 10 billion dollars per year so after considering this immense potential or this uh, huge market in the global or in the world, government has also, Indian government has also come up with Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana. In this, there is a targeted production of more than 11.2 lakh tons of seaweed by 2025. And government has earmarked 640 crores rupees to promote the seaweed cultivation. So, uh, towards the end, you can write, considering the importance of the seaweed, government is also putting efforts or taking the initiatives in the seaweed cultivation. So, this was our third answer. Let's see the model answer about the seaweeds, about the macroscopic algae and how it is wealth, then potential uses, then some challenges and finally, how uh, government is taking efforts. So, this was uh, the third question. So, this was it from my side. Thank you and have a nice day and keep writing.